Hidden Strike is an all new action movie taking Netflix by storm and by all new I mean it's actually five years old and they tried to rebrand it as a brand new movie and by storm I mean gratuitous amounts of flatulence. Hidden Strike is actually a five-year-old movie that did so poorly in its cinematic release that it was buried only to be dug up and hung out to dry on Netflix just the other day. Those cheeky barstools went ahead and slapped 2023 on it even though it's five years old. They thought they could present it as a new movie because they can because we're all stupid and they can get away with it. It stars Jackie Chan and it's nice to know that he's still around and still very much kicking and joining him is China's number one ice cream salesman, Chairman John Cena. Okay, so the first minute or so of the movie is dedicated to production house credits. Now that might not sound like a whole lot of time, but your average movie, you might get one or two, maybe three at a push. And they're each like, what, five, maybe 10 seconds. When you have this many, it just becomes a meme at that point. I started to wonder if either A, I'd accidentally started watching an SNL sketch, or B, and much more likely, I've developed dementia much earlier than expected. Hold on now, that, uh, that last one looks a, uh, <laughs> a little bit communistical. It's probably a, a good thing I don't know what that says. Anyway, the, uh, the endless credits were, it was somewhat reminiscent of Willem Dafoe in Mr. Bean's Holiday. Anyway, with about 3.2 million companies working on this production, you would expect it to be jolly well fantastic, wouldn't you? Well, almost. Every single person who's reviewed it so far seems to unanimously hate it. It's been written off as a mindless action comedy with terrible CGI. But, you know, as someone who grew up watching Jason Statham movies, sounds like a good bit of fun to me. So, strap in, and let's find out if Hidden Strike is actually a hidden gem. Spoiler alert, it isn't. But this should be fun. This movie follows John Cena's character, who is an ex-spec op soldier who lives alone in a village in the middle of the desert in Baghdad. Why does he live there? That's an excellent question. <laughs> now I come to think of it, I, I can't actually remember any kind of explanation as to why that is. He just does, uh, and he sticks out like a ginormous sore thumb. And on the other side of the conflict, we find Jackie Chan's character, whose job it is to safely lead a team of scientists through the perilous highway of death. And after a twist of fate, Chan and Cena find themselves working together to take down Urin Greyjoy, who is attempting to steal millions of gallons of oil. And this movie is directed by none other than Scott... Wah. Why? Whoa. I think uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, yeah, I think it's pronounced like a like a like, like a passing breeze. Scott. Wow. Yeah, anyway, Scott Passing Breeze is the one and only visionary that brought us Need for Speed back in 2014 that has since been described as a movie. And he's also directed the up and coming Incontinence 4. Sorry, I mean the Expendables 4 that will be walking gently into cinemas in September. And now you've got an idea of the caliber that we're working with. Let's shoot this pistol. So in classic action movie fashion, John Cena's character has been asked to go on one last mission, to which he says no. Yeah, well, he actually says no. But then his motivation comes in the form of the village that he's living in. The water supply is cut off and is ransomed for $100,000. Bing, bang, boom. There's your motive. But don't worry, because Bing Chiling has a plan. Where are we going to get $100,000? I'll think of something. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we could. Uh, glad we could get that settled. That's uh, that's reassuring. I'll think of something. Okay. Oh boy! And then there's the CG. My goodness gracious me! The CGI. If you grew up playing the, I don't know, the Philips CDI you'll be very familiar, maybe even comfortable with such fidelity. But for those of us with working optical nerves, it's not the most pleasant experience. This thing looks like a, an early 2000s Robert Rodriguez movie. And not even like a charming, nostalgic way. More a, I wish John Cena would jump out of the screen and use his prehistoric triceps to punch both of my eyes out kind of way. This is what real life looks like the day after you have a flashbang thrown directly into your face. Now, I have stated many times in past videos that when it comes to movies, I will take a movie with bad CG and good writing over a movie with good CG and bad writing 
any day. And I'm here to tell you today that that is still very much the case because the only thing in this movie that is possibly worse than the CG is the writing. If the graphics were prehistoric, then the writing, my goodness, the writing was pre-multicell organisms. Whoever, or whatever, wrote this dialogue in this movie must work part-time as a writer, as they have to spend the rest of their week filter feeding on the ocean floor somewhere. Okay, so the first third of the movie contains a lot of Chinese with English subtitles. Now, I cannot speak to the accuracy of the translation, but going off the translations that we do have and the rest of the dialogue, that's in English. The only thing I have to say is or as we would say, it's not very good. No, it's, oh, it's, it's, uh, no, it's not very good. There's only one thing more expensive than oil. Water. I, 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 I don't think that's the case. I think, that's, uh, I think that water is considerably cheaper than oil. Maybe I'm just out of touch at this point, but uh, even if we're talking olive oil, still, water, considerably cheaper. I've never heard of countries waging war over tap water. But there we go. And you also said the only thing more expensive than oil is water. There's only one thing more expensive than oil. Water. I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I reckon I can think of a couple of things off the top of my head more expensive than oil. Uh, you know, we've got things like tungsten, enriched uranium, Adobe cancellation fees. The list goes on, really. Although, I guess it does make sense that Urine Greyjoy would be trying to pump up the value of water. <laughs> Typical crypto, bro. And like I mentioned, a lot of the dialogue is in Chinese, but the real problem I had is not with the writing, but more the language itself. And that's because it's an incredibly efficient language. Words are typically shorter and you can say a lot with very little. So you better be a good reader if you want to keep up with the subtitles. Yeah, Captain Dyslexia over here, not the fastest reader, having a bit of a tough time, but maybe that's just me. I am super stupid. Maybe, maybe you'll have an easier time with it. I don't know. Also, this movie is dubbed as an action comedy, but the weird thing about that is the comedy part doesn't start till about halfway into the movie. The first 40 to 50 minutes, dead serious. Clint Eastwood stare, deadpan, not even a hint of humor. And then all of a sudden, halfway into the movie, Jackie and John just start cracking jokes out of nowhere. A little bit jarring, got a bit of whiplash. The genre just changes in an instant, just like that. A little bit weird. And at this point in the movie, John has just found out that his brother was killed and Jackie has just found out that some of his people have been killed too. So it's an emotion, emotional, it's an emotional tentpole, you would think. You're like, I'm all for comedy, but comedy is all about timing. And this movie has never heard of a clock. Qu'est-ce qui se passe ici? Où est mon argent? Bonjour. Speak French? That's all. Oh, also, I feel like I should mention that at one point in the movie, John Cena begin singing Old MacDonald. And this goes on for what I'm going to describe as too long. There is too much Old MacDonald. Old MacDonald have a farm. Yeah! With the big dog here and the widow dog there. Big dog, widow dog, big dog, widow dog. Old MacDonald had a farm. You know, there are many things to say in this world. And that just happens to be one of the things I happen to have seen. And now you have too. You're so welcome. You're so very welcome. And you know, as someone who grew up in the early 2000s, it's pretty cool to see John Cena and Jackie Chan on screen together. But, and look, by no means do they have bad chemistry, but if you're expecting, you know, Chris Tucker, rush hour levels of chemistry, it's just not there. It's not there. Look, I like sandwiches, but I don't garnish them with WD-40. You pickling my cabbage? Do you know what I'm saying? Two good things don't necessarily make a better thing. And now onto the action. And it was pretty nutty. Do grenade launchers do an excessive, like an unreal amount of damage? Maybe. Does absolutely everyone in this movie know martial arts? Pretty much. This movie also has some of the slowest machine guns I have ever seen. I don't know if they're single firing to improve accuracy or just to preserve the movie's budget, but it, it does look a little silly. Particularly the guy sat there single firing an LMG at a helicopter. I mean, come on. I tell you what though, I can't fault the creativity 
the vision, the ingenuity of who I can only assume was an 11 year old vehicle stunt choreographer. But there was one scene in particular where they grapple onto a bus, extend a conveniently sized ladder, hop on top, then detonate an explosive under the buggy, causing it to somehow swing in front of the bus, smashing the windshield, allowing them to hop in. Creative, indeed. Silly, unbelievably. Some people will like this, some people don't. I don't know, it's a balance of that. I'm tempted to say that real good action comes not necessarily from extravagance and explosions, crazy stunts, but more so from believability. You know, take uh, take the, the pen fight from the Born Identity, for example. Incredibly raw, very visceral, incredibly effective and hard hitting. And the only prop is a pen. No explosions, no crazy stunts, just a ballpoint pen. I think that too much fun can sometimes spoil a lot of action. Having said that though, this is a Jackie Chan movie. So the hand-to-hand -hand combat is great for the most part. Not the best I've ever seen, sure, but more than serviceable. And it has some very creative scenes. I do also appreciate long action scenes that aren't cut into a different shot every two milliseconds and are right up in the talent's faces so you can't actually see what's going on. And come on, it is cool seeing John Cena and Jackie Chan fight. Ah, okay. And um, we're right back to silly again. Never mind. And some of the cinematography was quite quirky and a little different. And some just left me feeling seasick. I remember this one scene where the camera was spinning for a good minute, maybe two. I, and I had, I had to just skip through it before I threw up and passed out. I grew up idolizing Jackie Chan as a kid. The Jackie Chan Adventures was one of my favorite animated shows growing up. I even collected, do you remember the talismans? They used to come in the magazines. Do you remember those? You know, it's always great to see Jackie Chan in something. But it's been a minute since I've seen Jackie Chan in something great. I mean, he was 64 when this was recorded. So, you know, he's not exactly a spring chicken, but look at Tom Cruise. I know that guy is a freak of nature, but he's also proof that older guys can still make great action movies. Jackie is unquestionably a legend, but it would be nice to see him in just one more classic before he retires. Just one. Now, by far, the dumbest part of this movie was the ending. So, to... Cut a long story short, they crashed a jet propelled truck into an oil tanker at full speed and everyone miraculously lived, including Bing Chiling, who was thrown out of the front because he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Big evil man falls off a cliff. Jackie Chan's daughter forgives him for leaving her as a child because he had a picture of her the whole time. Okay. And then John Cena, who fell off a cliff and died, didn't fall off a cliff and died because he's here on the cliff. How did that happen? I don't know, but by God it happened. And everyone lived happily ever after. This movie had a great bit of combat, but unfortunately that was drowned in a sea of terrible CGI, forgettable dialogue, and comedy that just consistently missed the mark. I've got to say that that's not down to any one actor, or any actor for that matter. I've got to say that the cast did a pretty good job with what they've got. I think it was definitely a writing slash directing problem. Is it, is it offensive? No, not particularly, but it's not particularly good either. It's fun at times, sure, but I couldn't seriously recommend this to you guys. Not even for the Jackie Chan, John Cena fight scene. And the fact that this is currently sat in the top 10 on Netflix is a, it's a pretty sad indictment of the current state of entertainment. So whatever you do, don't waste your time watching bad movies. Instead, waste your time watching me waste my time watching bad movies. And with that, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, a big shout out to the channel members and the Patreons. We have the top tiers, the Knights of Law. We have Flunky, Puzzlebon, Infinite Dum Dum, Cuss, Jax, David, ATS, Texas Lawman, Michael, Michael Terpia, Steve the Goat, David, Digital EXE, Saint Nemo, Daggerly69, nice. And of course, Kenneth Dogramachi. To each and every one of you, Knights of Law, I thank you for your service. Of course, we have the tier 2, Say, Dr. Melsky, Yonwich, Hadzu, Mark Maiden, Sensei Fang, Mendicant Bias, Michael S, Rich Walk, Nystagmus, Mike Grim and Jarek, and the Grand Admiral. And of course, a big shout out to all of the tier 1 members as well. To each and every one of you on this list, thank you so much for your support. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you. And there we go. Another day. Another Bing Chilling. Will you join me for my next one? You better do. You little bitch. But until then, take care of yourselves, guys. And I'll see you very soon.